Okay, we're good to go. So uh, welcome to the the uh, number two of two parts of the, of this uh, symposium on eDNA metabarcoding, sharing and verifying this uh, this kind of data. We have uh, five talks in this session. Uh, and then some room for discussion in the end. And the first uh, presentation is from Sophie. Um, you'll do a small, short presentation of yourself, I hope. Yeah, okay. Take the seat. Just adjusting the mic. <laughs> I'm supposed to just press the, the next button. Oh, maybe this one. Okay. It seems like the advanced button is not working. Okay. 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 Let's go. Yeah. So hi everyone, I'm Sophie Pamerlon from JB France, and today I will be presenting the, an overview of the French DNA data landscape with a focus on the National Technical Repository of Reference Genetic Sequences. That's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, that's French for you. <laughs> and I'm presenting this work. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm presenting this work on behalf of uh, the Patronat department uh, team that is working on uh, eDNA. So I'm not an eDNA expert myself, but I'm uh, in the working group around this topic, uh, especially around uh, mapping issues and standards. So don't hesitate to ask me questions about that, but I might not be able to answer the technical questions on sequences. <laughs> So my presentation uh, will follow the, this plan. We, I will uh, first talk about the French organization of data management systems, uh, then how we manage eDNA data specifically, and uh, I will, uh, in the end, present the National Technical Reposit Repository of Genetic Sequences. And if you want to know more about our abstract, you can uh, flash the QR code on this slide. So I'm not going to explain again what is eDNA because I think at this point most of you already know <laughs> most of the information there is to get on the topic. But it's a, it's a new, uh, relatively new method that um, that is really challenging and uh, interesting for uh, lots of uh, purposes, such as uh, identifying uh, taxa at all life stage, um, detecting species and or taxa that are uh, usually to detect by uh, ob observers uh, on the field. And uh, it also gives a more holistic approach to life on Earth, uh, thanks to metabarcode. And this is a great tool in order to strengthen expertise for env environmental management, to support monitoring and evaluation for public policies, um, and to better understand ecosystem functioning, including soil biodiversity and uh, groups that are not uh, really studied. So at the Patronat department in France, in France, sorry, um, the, the department is hosted at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris, and we're working with uh, uh, lots of uh, information systems data uh, that are coming either from public policies, uh, research, and or collections. So that's really big amounts of uh, data that are also linked to JBIF because we uh, aggregate them and send them to JBIF. And we also um, filter data from JBIF on French territories to include them in the national databases. Uh, so the, these big amounts of data are really challenging to work with and especially uh, future eDNA data that, uh, that will likely come in, uh, in big numbers too. So uh, what we want to do is uh, strengthen the, um, the data production chain uh, in France and uh, especially uh, take into account that factors can influence the results uh, at each step. So we really need to be able to document and describe each step of the uh, eDNA uh, acquisition and uh, identification protocols um, in order to uh, avoid uh, issues when something gets wrong at, the, at one step or another. So we need to be able to go back uh, to the, the earlier steps uh, in order to do the analysis over again. So for example, for the sampling step, uh, we need to uh, uh, check if we have information on the environment the samples were taking, uh, uh, taken, sorry, the protocols, uh, which volume of uh, sampling was filtered, 
uh, then uh, we need to be able to check uh, how many PCR cycles were used and uh, the sequences. And lastly, in the, in the last steps, uh, if the pipeline is accessible and what reference uh, genetic sequence repository was used. And this, uh, all of this information uh, should be, uh, allow us to um, answer the question, what is an e, uh, eDNA exchange data item? And more, impor more importantly, what is a good DNA uh, exchange data item? So in the box at the top of this slide, you can see what usually makes uh, an occurrence that is not specifically a DNA occurrence. It's uh, most of the time a species or a taxon. Uh, that was observed by a person in a place at a given date. But with uh, eDNA occurrences, it's a bit more complicated than that because uh, we don't have a direct observer, but we have uh, just a person or persons who did the sampling. Uh, we don't have a date and place, uh, but we have uh, an observation or collection date and place, but uh, sampling date and place, so we don't really know if the species were uh, was uh, recorded at uh, at this point. Uh, um, I mean, we don't know if the species was happening at this point specifically, or uh, maybe uh, some kilometers away uh, um, up the stream or something like that. So uh, it's more difficult to know what species uh, we're dealing with and uh, where they were exactly. Um, so we need valid data with sufficient data quality and uh, metadata too. Uh, and we also need to uh, use existing standards in order to reuse mandatory and recommended fields uh, to better share the data and follow the FAIR principles. And we also make a distinction between raw data uh, and interpreted data. So uh, interpreted data, it's what comes, from the, comes out from the bioinformatics workflow. But uh, sometimes there's issue at uh, one of the steps uh, that, when, that uh, happened earlier. So we need to go back, to be able to go back to the raw data uh, in order to uh, re-analyze uh, the, the sampling, the, sorry, <laughs> the sampling if needed. And uh, finally, we also uh, need to be able to share and upload eDNA data in existing workflows. So for that, uh, I will talk about it later, but we will follow GBIF guidelines. And uh, we also have uh, high hopes for the new data, mo data model to uh, answer the, the questions we might have about data's mapping and standards. And also we are excited to uh, have a look at the new GBIF tool for uh, eDNA data. So all of that uh, makes a national technical repository of uh, reference genetic sequences really uh, needed. And uh, because eDNA use is greatly increasing, so we, have, uh, we will have big volumes of data in all environments and for all taxa. Um, markers are sometimes non-existing or inaccessible in the public domain, so they, uh, that can be unfair. Uh, and uh, we also uh, need to have sequences that have a uh, really good quality. And the uh, national repository uh, could also be, be really useful to include local genetic diversity uh, to better identify, uh, identify um, sequences from uh, uh, certain territories. So that's why we, we need a, a national repository of sequences. So how to, to construct sorry, this uh, technical sequence repository? So it's currently being built, uh, but it's uh, heavily based on GenSec nomenclature, uh, following uh, the, the steps that are shown on this uh, slide. So at least one GenSec uh, one to three sequence, uh, that is to say a sequence coming from type specimens in collection. Uh, if possible, also a GenSec uh, type four uh, sequence, that is a sequence coming from a random specimen for the species in collection, that is not a type. And uh, if we really don't have uh, anything else, uh, sequences coming from specimen for which we only have pictures or even no, uh, no other information at all, but it is really not recommended. Uh, so for each step of the building of the, the repository, we uh, checked if there were existing standards and tools that could uh, help us to uh, construct this, uh, this repository using existing uh, standards. So we found most of them already existing. So for example, for the um, uh, taxonomic uh, checkings, we have TaxRef, which is our national referential. 
and its uh, tax health is already published uh, within JBIF and its a uh, core constituent of the JBIF backbone taxonomy. So we, we have a really uh, soundproof uh, taxonomic backbone. Uh, and then we uh, focus on the GGBN uh, standard uh, to standardize the data linked to each sequence marker or sequencing protocol. Uh, also some other extensions for uh, specimens in collection and for metadata. And we also uh, looked at the standards for uh, management and sharing of the data. Uh, and we uh, really hope we will be able to map everything uh, to international standards and especially TADWIC standards. So just uh, a few reminder of uh, data quality linked to eDNA uh, information. We are really looking at uh, to be uh, to have the data and metadata of the highest quality possible at each step of the data lifecycle and uh, especially following uh, fair guidelines and uh, existing standards. So in conclusion, uh, eDNA is a, it's an increasingly used innovative method uh, that uh, especially rebalances the amount of data on less visible or less accessible uh, taxa. Uh, and it, that means that uh, there will be great increase, a great increase in the amount uh, of data to come and to uh, deal with at the national level. Uh, so we need a reliable reference database to improve the expertise quality and to support public policies, uh, a service focused on its users uh, that can be researchers, but also data managers, environmental firms, and so on. A national reference database linked to international standards and a new public tool that is linked to existing information systems. So our questions, uh, it's really just the beginnings. So uh, we are still wondering exactly about what standards to use, which tools to use, uh, how to organize correctly collectively to allow the production of quality data and metadata for future uh, analysis. So we are worrying on ex existing tools and use cases, but uh, I'm really, uh, I would be really happy to have your input and uh, feedback on your own projects and the national uh, reference database if you have some. Thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you. I have a number of questions, but maybe I will start with the last one that I had in mind. So, my, thanks, great talk. And my understanding is that this national repository will only allow gene sequ uh, sorry, not genomic sequences, but metamarcoding sequence and be stored in this French repository. And those sequence data will not be shared with international sequence repositories such as ENA or GeneBank. Is this correct? Or you still want to implement the process that with this data will be also deposited? Um, that's a great question. Great question sorry. Uh, for the moment, we, uh, as I said, it's only the beginning. So we're just really uh, looking forward to build uh, a repository. So I think at first it will be the only the French uh, sequences. But then, uh, I, mean, I mean, it will be only hosted in this French repository. But uh, as I said, we already have uh, links to JBIF, thanks to TaxRef, which is our national uh, referential for taxonomic uh, information. So um, I, I think we try to up, uh, up, uh, update TaxRef with uh, information coming from the repository. And we'll see if we can also um, put the sequences in other uh, international repositories. I just think, and you know, the, my concern will be that if we create a precedent where we create national repository of sequence data in one particular country, we will have this power, you know, where we can control sharing of the data and other countries will not be able to access this. So I think it's really important to be open, yeah. to mm -hmm. conduct open science. And this is what NCBI is trying to do. And, you know, to encourage countries whether they do, you know, any biodiversity study and create their own repository, still to share this data, you know, with international